This is the iPhone 16 Pro Max, and this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I'm gonna talk about both of them, kind of compare them. And when you look at it at a first glance, just from this top down, they look very similar. In fact, if it weren't for the colors, you may not be able to tell which one is which. But I'm gonna start things off with design and kind of show you what is different. So with the 16 Pro Max, we're getting a ever so slightly larger display at 6.9 inches versus the 6.7 inch display on the 15 Pro Max. And the reason why it's ever so slightly larger is because of those slimmer bezels as well. And you can definitely see it when you put it side by side, but the body itself is also slightly larger too. Uh, to accommodate to that larger display, but the slim bezels are awesome. You're going to love them. In addition, another difference here is going to be the camera control button on the right side. And yes, I think it's a button. Uh, it's a new piece of hardware that differentiates it with its predecessor, with the 15 Pro Max right here. So yes, that camera control button is present right here. And that's another main difference uh, to kind of show that you're rocking the new 16 Pro or Pro Max or whichever camera or whichever iPhone 16 it is because all the 16s have the camera control button. And obviously the third main thing to show that it's the new iPhone 16 Pro Max is the color, Desert Titanium. So the flagship color this year, Desert Titanium. Last year's blue titanium and natural titanium, but they got rid of the blue uh, for the desert. I personally like the blue titanium color over desert, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. With the launch of the iPhone 16 series, Banks released some awesome new cases, and I've got three of them that I wanna share with you guys. And the first one is the Armor Pro 600D. So it's got a new side texture and it has improved anti-slip frame, which last year a lot of people's comments was that the Armor Pro was slippery. So this year, Banks made a major improvement to solve the issue. It also has MagSafe and the magnets are very powerful. Not only that, it's built with real 600D Kevlar fiber. It's durable and robust. It has six feet of drop protection with shockproof airbags and also has precise cutouts for all the buttons and free replacement if unsuitable. Next up, we got the Aurora Armor Air, and I, I love this one. It has a float weave technology to craft Kevlar fiber cases with vibrant multicolored designs. It also has a smooth surface and durable 600D Kevlar fiber. It has an enhanced lens protection, which I do appreciate. It's sleek, it's lightweight, it's elegant, and also MagSafe compatible. And again, the magnets are super strong. The third case is the Passion Green Armor Air. And like the Aurora Armor Air, it has that float weave technology, it has that smooth surface, it has that durable 600D Kevlar fiber, it has that enhanced lens protection, it's sleek, it's lightweight, it's elegant, it's MagSafe compatible, and yes, those MagSafe magnets are super strong. And if you use code MTG15, you can get a 15% off discount. Huge shout out to Banks for sponsoring a portion of this video. Things are a little bit different when we come to the software and performance. They're both currently running iOS 18 and uh, they're both eligible or they're both going to be running Apple intelligence when that does come out. But here's the thing, I don't wanna talk about Apple Intelligence because one, it's not, a, it's not out for the public yet. If you have the developer beta, yes, you can try out Apple Intelligence, but since it's not out for the public, I don't wanna talk about a feature that hasn't even come out yet. And I don't think you should go and pick up a product, any product, doesn't matter if it's Apple or any other company, you shouldn't pick it up uh, for the promise of future updates. That's just me, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, it is going to come to exclusively to the 15 Pro and Pro Max, as well as all the iPhone 16 uh, series, but no other iPhone. So if you have a 15 or older, it's not going to work. Uh, but here's what I have to say. A17 Pro was already a powerful chipset. So it's gonna be no surprise that the A18 Pro is even more powerful. And they did some internal changes to make uh, the heat dissipation better with the iPhone 16 Pro Max and doesn't get as warm to the touch. Uh, throughout my setup process, it was a tad bit warm, but that's to be expected. Uh, after I got the setup process done and uh, transferred over, everything over, 
it's been working very smooth. I've had no issues, no hiccups whatsoever uh, with just the daily use, whether it be watching YouTube videos or all that good stuff, calling, texting, uh, recording videos, FaceTime, it has not gotten warm to the touch. And obviously, uh, within the past year, Apple did roll out software updates for the 15 Pro Max. So it hasn't been getting it hasn't been getting as warm as it used to. So there is that. Again, this is just my own experience. Some may have 15 Pro and Pro Max that haven't gotten warm to the touch at all, but just in my experience, I've had to get warm, especially when I used it for FaceTime calling. Now, 16 Pro Max comes equipped with Wi-Fi 7 and then Wi-Fi 6C with the 15 Pro Max. Just wanted to point that out there, but. I don't really notice anything on a day-to-day -day difference. There's really nothing. I mean, if you put it in Geekbench mark scores and all the numbers and stuff, yes, A18 Pro is going to perform much better. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's been perfectly fine. But we get some differences when it comes to the cameras and some differences that I personally do like. So with the 16 Pro Max, we're getting a new 48 megapixel ultra wide camera with a larger sensor with a larger sensor and i'm all for this larger sensor ultra wide 40 megapixel camera one because i use ultra wide for my photos uh typically as well as my videos and i use it mainly for uh videos that i post on tiktok uh, definitely be sure to follow me if you haven't already as we are creeping towards 40,000 followers on there as well. And actually at this at this rate, I think I'm gonna pass uh, the amount of followers on TikTok than I have here on YouTube. Definitely be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. My goal here is 45,000 uh, subscribers before the end of 2024. So it really does mean a lot uh, if you do subscribe and you support the channel. But I'm happy that they got the new ultra wide 40 megapixel camera. It's great. Now camera control, uh, it acts as like a shutter and a zoom button. So I'm gonna press on it. And um, as you can see, you just kind of tap it right here and it shows you uh, kind of the zoom and I'm gonna bring it just a tad bit closer right here. So I can kind of zoom in or zoom out. Um, if I click right on the screen, I can change it to the depth. I can change it to the exposure. I can have it into just camera modes. I can change the styles, tone, and I just like to leave it in zoom. Uh, that's just me, but I don't know. I've I've been having some accidental touches in the last couple of days, so it hasn't really been on point. Maybe they can fix that with a software update. And what I mean is like, I'm about to use it, right? And I, I click on it and then just like, I don't even press it again, just like one slide and it takes a photo. I don't know how that happens, but nonetheless, it's a cool feature, but I think it's not 100% like fully baked yet. So there may be some uh, kind of work to do on that. Again, this is my experience. Some may have a flawless experience, but for me, it's, you know, hasn't really been a hundred percent, but it's still a cool feature to have. Uh, in regards though, everything else with the cameras is just so much better on the 16 Pro. That doesn't mean, oh, you know, we get a new ultra wide. I should definitely upgrade from 15 Pro to 16 Pro Max. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means like, you're gonna get some camera improvements. And if you are an avid camera user and you really care about your ultra wide quality, then yes, you're gonna get that improvement with the 16 Pro Max. When we head over to the battery, here's where things shine for the 16 Pro Max. Apple does promise up to 33 hours of video playback right here on the 16 Pro Max versus 29 hours on the 15 Pro Max. And so far, it's been performing awesome. Like the 16 Pro Max lasts all day, no issues whatsoever, but the 15 Pro Max, like I had to charge it before I sat down to record this video and to talk about it with you guys. That's pretty much how terrible uh, the battery life has been. And just the battery life itself, the battery health uh, has been pretty bad, like 90%. That's surprising. I thought it'd be like 89 at this rate, but yeah, 90% is not good in one year. And I use, I use my phone often and my 13 Pro Max, fun fact, that was still 100% one year later when I picked up the 14 Pro Max. So that does say a lot. So I'm going to have to try out 16 Pro Max and then 16 Pro and 16 to see if the promise that Apple made to the battery life upgrades are actually a real thing. But so far it has been performing much better than 15 Pro Max. Another thing that I do like is 45 watts of wire charging with the 16 Pro Max. And then uh, you get MagSafe 25 watts of charging. And I always MagSafe charge my iPhones. 
Uh, I have it on my desk. I have it in my in my bedroom, on my stand. I have MagSafe chargers in my car. I also have wire charging in my car too, but I have MagSafe charger there too. Uh, so it really does work out. Like I can just MagSafe charge. I don't need to bring a wire with or a cable with me anywhere. But in the event I do, I know that I have fast charging. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is just not that fast, like 15 watts of MagSafe charging. It's, it's all right, but it's, it could definitely have been better, but you know, it is better now that we have its successor. So yes, battery life is definitely going to be better on the 16 Pro Max. Battery department overall is better uh, with the 16 Pro Max. And then the pricing has been the same. Apple kept the pricing on the uh, 16 Pro Max the same as the 15 Pro Max uh, from last year. So that's good, uh, no complaints there. Obviously, there usually aren't too many uh, direct deals or sales from Apple. So if you wanna pick it up with your carrier, go right ahead. I personally like to pick it up directly from Apple. Just get it unlocked and I don't need to deal with paying like 10 bucks, 20 bucks a month for a phone. I just wanna pay it upright or trade in my phone, get a discounted price and still pay it upright and just get it over with on day one. That's really it for me on the price. But overall, what I have to say, I honestly feel like this, at least to me, is the smallest year over year upgrade between like the Pro Maxes. And if you have the iPhone 15 Pro Max, there is absolutely no need to go ahead and pick up the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And even if you have the 14 Pro Max, I still don't think there's a need to upgrade to the 16 Pro Max. If you have something older, like a 13 Pro Max, 12 Pro Max, 11, 10, whatever it is, 10S, then yes, obviously you're gonna up, you can upgrade and you're gonna see a great improvement. But just year over year, it you know definitely could have been better. So that's what I have to say about this. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, definitely be sure to smash the like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. I will help push my content out to more people. That's been it from me. Check out these cases from Banks for the iPhone 16 series. Truly is awesome, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.